There are a number of obstacles to having an effective memory and when we begin to look at these you have to take into consideration that at a given moment in time none of these may describe you or all of these may describe you or maybe only one or two of them actually fits with a given situation. To begin we look at repression and distortion and that we tend to remember ideas in a way that fits into our existing frameworks, our existing schema. Another way to think about this is you might um, think about the way that expectations affect the way that you actually label incoming data and then store it into your memory. So for example, if you hear come advising time, man, that professor is the best professor for that class. You've got to get them and register for that class. You're going to enjoy it. It's going to be fun. They're just great. So your expectations then, the schema that you have existing for that particular professor in that class is it's great, it's fun, you're going to have a good time. And so what happens when you get into that class is all the incoming messages, you're going to distort, manipulate, maybe even repress certain messages about that professor in a way that fits into your existing schema. So you might excuse maybe inappropriate behavior or maybe you would excuse um, a day in which the professor didn't have very good energy because you know that they're still really fun and they're really great to be around. Well, that's just an example of repression and distortion. You also have retroactive inhibition that occurs whenever you have an intermingling in stored data where maybe your schemas start to blend together, your categories are not as distinct as they once were. And as that happens, uh, what usually is occurring is that there's interference between input and recall. And for example, studies have indicated that those that slept in between input and recall could remember things better than those that had normal everyday activities between input and recall. Because those that had normal everyday activities, what occurred was intermingling between what they input and their other inputs that already existed. So you can try to really uh, decrease the amount of interruptions, interferences between input and recall, and that will lead to less likely confusion. Also, you can try to make your associations more distinct, the ways that you remember things more distinct so that they don't intermingle. Also, you have this idea of primacy and an idea of recency. Primacy and that what we heard first, we're going to recall, and what we heard last with recency, we're more able to recall. So whatever message is in the middle is the one that just really doesn't get remembered, unfortunately. Sometimes, though, that might be the most important. Uh, that can be a problem. Rigid thinking can also be an obstacle to effective memory. A free association is a better way to be able to recall information. Rigid thinking occurs when you become really stressed and frustrated and you aren't able to make key associations to retrieve stored information especially if you don't have multiple ways to retrieve that information. This is where engaging in multiple strategies for short-term and long-term memory can be more effective for you. Also, there may be some ex changes in your memory, and so you have to think about what you're going through in life, uh, where you are in life, your life situation. There may be a loss of confidence. Maybe you had a really traumatic event in your life and you don't really feel confident in your decision making and you may even start to question your ability to remember important information and key data. Also, there may be a fear of aging and its effects. This probably isn't plaguing many of you right now because you're young and invincible, right? However, as you get older, a number of people can actually begin to fear problems related to dementia and especially if there's a history of it within their family. And so as they get older, they can actually create a self-fulfilling prophecies where they think that they're losing their memory and then it's the early signs of a particular disease. It may not even be that, but they create that self-fulfilling prophecy. And so what they do is they fulfill their memory problems. Also, you can have sensory complications that may affect your ability to store data with certain inputs. And this may deal with, uh, you know, problems related to hearing or seeing or, for example, I have a grandmother who's lost basically all her taste buds and so nothing tastes the way that it used to. 
and it really has a huge impact on her ability to take in incoming data. And it doesn't just compare very well to what her existing schema are for the way things taste. Also, you have medications that have certain side effects to them, and depending on what medications you are, you may have problems with memory. And there's some medications that say things like, don't operate heavy machinery while taking this drug. You may not want to take a test either while you're on that particular medication because it could have an impact on your ability to recall information. Inactivity has a huge impact on your memory. This surprises many people. But when you have a very active body, uh, your body, uh, your different nerve, your nervous system, your autonomic nervous system, your uh, circular nervous, circulatory system, all these things are engaged and it can really help with your memory systems. Uh, if you are interested more about physiology related to memory, there are some recommendations that I can give you for readings. Also, if you have a low amount of social interaction, that is, you don't interact with uh, a variety of people on a regular basis, this can impact your memory because you may not have very much conversational effectiveness, you may have difficulty making free associations because you have limited social interactions, aren't exposed to new ideas as often as others, and then also heightened emotional states affect your memory because it affects your ability to pay attention. And so when you're really, really stressed out or maybe you experienced a loss that's very traumatic or maybe you just heard some news that really bummed you out. Uh, that may create a heightened emotional state that affects your ability to be able to pay attention and then be able to recall and remember key information. So these are some obstacles, some impasses that you may face in relationship to memory. Obviously, we've already gone over some of the ways to improve your memory. We looked at different ways for each of the memory systems, focusing mostly on short-term and long-term memory systems. But there are some more general ways that we will explore related to improving your memory.